DeFi was always there, just uh, there was not that not much hype around it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like yeah. everybody knew that generally blockchain is DeFi. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. When you look at Swissborg, 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 Swissborg is sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the market. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fee. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. Dear crypto community and blockchain buyers across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no OBS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest, Anna from Cointelegram, someone who's extremely enthusiastic, passionate about crypto, traveling the world to different conferences. And by the way, I've seen you at many, many conferences, Anna. It's such a pleasure to always bump into you. And today we're gonna to talk about DeFi, about NFTs, about institutional investors, and some really cool topics. But before we kick off, don't forget to check out Crypto Slate, one of the best crypto news media outlets in the game that creates summaries of all these interviews so you can find out more about what Anna has to say in written format. So without further ado, Anna, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for the invitation for your show, Alex. <laughs> it's so lovely to see you in London, in Davos, and now in Dubai. It's it's a crazy, it's a big world, but it's such a small community. But I'd love to ask you first, Anna, like what simple question about how you fell in love with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I will tell you, but uh, I would like to make a remark uh, that uh, your audience should as well read Coin's Telegram. Yes, of <laughs> our course. Crypto we'll put a link below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we'll put our interview as well there, so <laughs> you guys can read it as well. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'll tell you about uh, my road in uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. Uh, I am knew out about crypto quite uh, lately in 2017. And I studied international law and one of my group mates had internship in law company in Ukraine, which deals with crypto and blockchain. He just mentioned in the conversation Bitcoin. It was probably beginning of 2017. I started Google uh, what that started reading about uh, this industry and I got interested. And uh, then I wanted to make some investments when it costed $2,000, but uh, I made a mistake. I told about that to my parents. They started shouting at me, so I didn't <laughs> invest at that time. And uh, generally, before I attended some conferences on forex markets and etc., I wanted uh, to try to invest into stocks. But uh, my real first investment, my first financial asset uh, was Ethereum. And Bitcoin and eventually I started to invest in, in October 2017. At that uh, time I was uh, invited by one company for the interview. Uh, they made ICO and I started working with them. I presented them at the conferences and as well I became the PR manager. So <laughs> I didn't have a clue at the time about uh, PR and uh, like just a bit marketing but uh, I um, I figured out <laughs> how to do things, how to promote the company. So I worked for them uh, for some time, but uh, then in 2018, 
uh, long bear market started and uh, crypto started falling down. Unfortunately, I, <laughs> I was not aware much about how markets work and that it's normal that after such a bull run, there is always correction. And so uh, I just uh, continued buying, <laughs> even on the top, didn't fix any of my profits. But luckily, since three years, I'm in profit now and uh, crypto industry opens a lot of doors for me. I, um, I can now travel the world, uh, meet a lot of uh, interesting, exciting people and it gave me a lot of freedom. <laughs> That's super cool. I guess we learn from these type of situations. Yeah. But so like you were into Ethereum back then, that was kind of like your first crypto asset. Like, are you still like really excited about Ethereum? How do you feel about Ethereum now today as in 2021? Uh, so of course, uh, Ethereum is not perfect, especially this uh, gas fees. Uh, and uh, you mentioned me in the conversation before that you're currently not such a big fan of Ethereum, but uh, still I think that it's uh, it can go anywhere. It's uh, still big. All the all the new dApps are on Ethereum. Big part of uh, DeFi is locked in Ethereum. So it's it's just inevitable. I don't think that any other cryptocurrency can uh, replace it on the se second place. So I'm still bullish on it. And uh, like I was a bit disappointed for some time. Uh, like maybe one and a half year ago, so I switched a big part of my Ethereum to Bitcoin. And currently, as uh, you, you see, the, the returns are bigger on Ethereum. Uh, so I again invest more, more into Ethereum and as well into some altcoins. And as well, I have some friends who are uh, traditional stock market investors and they are really big. And uh, But uh, then, uh, like a lot of institutional investor, investors, they have problems with buying uh, real Bitcoin or real cryptocurrency because like it's complicated for them. They need to open crypto, bank account and etc. So uh, they fall back, for example, to buying a Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or Grayscale Ethereum Trust. So I convinced uh, such uh, one of my friends to go into a Grayscale Ethereum Trust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's super cool. That great influence, and definitely in that sense. And, and it's funny you mentioned Ethereum. And by the way, uh, yeah, you're, you're totally right. You know, for me, it's more like frustrations of why do I have to pay these gas fees? Why is it slow? But I really hope Ethereum, you know, like will achieve what you're yeah. you're, you're explaining. Um, in terms of Ethereum, that you talked about how all the DApps are built on top of Ethereum, which is a perfect transition to DeFi, right? And especially we saw each other at the DeFi Congress here yeah. in Dubai. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your feelings about DeFi these days. Like what are some of your favorite projects or s favorite asset classes or, or specific protocols? What excites you the most about DeFi? Uh, so generally, DeFi was always there, just uh, there was not that not much hype around <laughs> yeah. it. So yeah, like yeah. everybody knew that generally blockchain is DeFi because it uh, removes intermediaries, it uh, like gives uh, access to uh, finances and etc. And so, like there are a lot of uh, use cases such as we see decentralized exchanges, insurance, and the biggest one is uh, lending and borrowing. And uh, this year with Compound, it became super big. Everybody started uh, searching for these governance uh, tokens, providing liquidity to a lot of uh, projects, to a lot of protocols. But uh, you should be as well careful with that, <laughs> especially if uh, like, uh, a lot of these uh, completely new projects are unaudited. So uh, there, are, uh, there are some risks associated with that. Uh, but um, generally, in some way, it seems uh, like the times of ICOs when everybody launched uh, their new projects just with, uh, with idea and without anything else because of the hype, like free money on the market. Uh, this, the same we can see now with uh, DeFi, <laughs> like new free money on the market. You just stake, you uh, get uh, enormous gains. <laughs> And etc. But so of course, uh, there are some uh, alleged projects, uh, trustworthy. And um, as for my personal investments, I prefer not uh, like, of course, it's, sometimes it's better to enter the, uh, some projects very early so you can uh, get um, the biggest returns. But I'm a bit probably conservative in that way. So uh, I invest into projects which already have some proof of the activity in the market. For example, I have uh, some uh, Aave 
uh, chaining, but it's more like Oracle. Uh, NFTs, the hypes around NFTs, and we saw that back in uh, 2017 with CryptoKinties, and currently it's uh, back. Uh, so I got as well some uh, tokens of uh, Rarible NFT Rarible, Marketplace, yeah. uh, Avagochi, Avagochi, as well as some kind of <laughs> NFT Marketplace, uh, Dapper Labs, Flow. And so generally, like, uh, I, uh, like it's easier for me not to spend uh, a lot of uh, gas fees on Uniswap. So I go just to centralized exchanges through like Binance, Huobi, Kra uh, Kraken, Coinbase. And uh, that shows to me if uh, those exchanges uh, accepted uh, these tokens. Uh, that's like n nothing bad will happen with them. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Why, why are you so bullish with the NFTs, by the way? Like, so you mentioned lots of tokens and platforms that are creating NFTs. What gets you so excited about NFTs and why are you so yeah, bullish? So with NFTs, it's more some kind of really ga gambling for me. Like we see some meme tokens, yeah. uh, like recently it was, it seems, sold for 300 Ethereum. Or something like it's more than half a million <laughs> and you like wonder for what but probably it's uh, the same like with the art pieces like for so especially with modern art for somebody it may seem like this thing costs nothing but somebody is ready to pay millions for it like at the art auctions <laughs> yeah you're right it's fun right it has that fun element to it yeah. um and I, I by the way i love the way that you said before DeFi, DeFi already existed. Bitcoin itself is DeFi, the mother of DeFi, and DeFi is now a brand now. So I love how you kind of explain that it didn't just start recently. It's been there since uh, day one, uh, which is really cool. And one last thing I wanted to ask you about is institutional investors. You mentioned Grayscale a little bit earlier, and I remember we had a chat just yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and you were kind of saying that, you know, 2018, 2019, the question was when institutions, but 2020, end of 2020, 2021 is the institutions are here, like tip, dipping their toes into the water. Is that how you see it? Uh, tell us a little bit more about the institutions. Yeah, I think it's a, it can be a bit scary because these institutions, they have a bunch of money under their control. So they can easily manipulate the market. It's not like some a group of retail <laughs> investors uh, doing some movements, but like at the same time we saw with this Wall Street bets and uh, <laughs> GameStop uh, stock uh, rally, uh, the retail investors can as well influence the market a lot in uh, like in cooperation. Uh, but still, institutional investors have like their like unity. And so, uh, like, with, especially with Elon Musk's tweets, <laughs> he can easily manipulate it's the crazy. market. Crazy. Yeah. Dogecoin yesterday was crazy. No, it's uh, it's not that crazy. Like just thirty percent or something. Not that yeah. much, not that big gains. <laughs> it's few weeks back. That's true. Yeah, thirty percent is normal for our crazy lives. Right? Yeah, and the, the, another interesting thing that institutional investors are getting not only for traditional top ten coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, Z Cash, US. However, <laughs> the last three, I, I don't see much uh, interest, much uh, heat uh, on the market around that, but still. And uh, it's interesting that uh, there are some uh, DeFi funds launched, uh, DeFi indexes launched uh, for institutional investors, for example, like CoinShares or Bitwise funds. That's super cool. Well, you know, thank you for being so open and sharing, you know, which assets you like, what was your first investment, how you fell in love with its space. It's always lovely, Siana, and I really hope we keep on bumping into each other no matter where we are on the planet. <laughs> yeah, great to be on your show. Yeah, lovely having you guys. And if you like this interview, don't forget to like, comment, and blast that bell notification so you get access to more of these timeless interviews with these amazing people. And we look forward to seeing you every Wednesday, premiering at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. See you next week, guys. Yeah.